<coughs> You're a man. Yeah. I mean... Do I not look like that? You have been my greatest love. Be careful, Diana. I do not deserve you. Have you never met a man before? I mean, what about your father? I had no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. I'm Steve Travers' secretary. What is a secretary? I go where he tells me to go, and I do what he tells me to do. Yeah, well, where I'm from, that's called slavery. I really like her. Fantastic. Oh, Ladies, after you. I do. I like her. We truly are being shown on a regular basis what is about to unfold on this earth very soon. I checked out the recent Batman vs. Superman movie depicting tons of chaos and destruction. Many great YouTube channels out there have broken down that movie and shown a, a lot of the hidden meanings. But there was a particular character who showed up, Wonder Woman, who many of us know from our childhood as, again, one of the other superheroes. And she's actually getting her own movie now in 2017. I just saw the trailer about it and I got to tell you I was floored just by the symbolism and the messages being shown as well in this Wonder Woman movie that is coming out and I really wanted to get into the things that I noticed you know I don't claim to be an authority on these things you know many of us see things in different ways and I would love to hear your input and the things that you were noticing as well but let's just check into what this movie Wonder Woman is all about or at least what they're showing for now the poster says power grace wisdom and wonder and of course sounds all well and good but really I think there's definitely much messages that uh, we need to be aware of as to what they're showing and here on IMDb it says an Amazon princess leaves her island home to explore the world and becomes the greatest of its heroes so keep that in mind an Amazon princess of course we can think that it means you know something completely innocent from you know a particular place of the earth called the Amazon but I think there's definitely much more to that as we scroll down and look at uh, more of the storyline it says the Amazonian princess warrior Diana left her lush tropical island Island to dwell in our urban cityscapes of glass and steel, tutored in the ways of the Greek warriors and outfitted with incredible gifts the goddess bestowed upon her people, she becomes Paradise Island's emissary to civilization. Again, sounds well and good, sounds like she's well-meaning and wants to help humanity, but you know, as we get into the trailer itself, I took some screenshots. Right in the trailer, we start seeing Illuminati symbolism right from the get-go. We've got the Knights Templar symbolism that is seen on a particular soldier that she rescues at the beginning who ends up on her island. We see it yet again 
okay, on uh, the airplanes. And again, we can see that this is, again, none other than the Knights Templar symbol, secret society, Illuminati, New World Order symbolism already being shown. I believe that the wars and all these, you know, horrible battles that the world has gone through, many of them have been engineered. And these Knights Templar or secret societies have been the ones that have been behind the whole thing. Okay, so that's what I believe we are being shown here. Another thing I found interesting in the trailer, they show this, which I believe is uh, the home of one woman where she comes from and in one of their meetings you can see major occultic symbolism here i believe this is showing the ouroboros symbolism something that we spoke about in a previous video when we talked about the together conference uh, the uh, ecumenical one world gathering that was taking place and this same symbolism is seen okay as the ouroboros which is one of the top 10 or a high high illuminati symbol and it represents the snake uh, the snake or serpent, one of the most ancient symbols used in myths and was widely used throughout the world. They often act as guardians, such as the statue of Draco, guarding the entrance of the city of London. Snakes are identified with forbidden wisdom or knowledge as in the serpent in the Garden of Eden from Genesis. So I think that's probably what they're depicting, a forbidden knowledge, fallen angel, you know, stuff that is going on here. Being poisonous and generally dangerous to humans, the snake symbol is commonly used in Western culture as a representation of evil. The Ouroboros, another ancient symbol consisting of a snake eating its tail, its own tail usually stands for constant regeneration or infinity. And the links to the Illuminati, most prominently best-selling David Icke, he talks about that. But the snake's connection with evil has made it a popular insult thrown at any enemy. More famously, Andrew Jackson's famous indictment of the Bank of the United States, should I let you go on, you will ruin 50,000 families and that would be my sin. You are a den of vipers and thieves. I have determined to rout you out, and by the eternal bringing his fist down on the table, I will rout you out. Okay, so again, links to the Illuminati, they, uh, they use snakes in its uh, uh, rituals or symbols. Actually, they do not use snakes, but Freemasonry definitely uses this in the Knights of the Brazen Serpent. Okay, and so we can see this, uh, this symbol of the Ouroboros is very much prevalent in companies. Again, the serpent eating the tail. You've got Britney Spears using the snake symbolism. You've got, of course, good old Rihanna, Lucent Labs, Firefox. Okay, we can see all this kind of thing, this major snake serpent symbolism, which primarily, to me, represents forbidden knowledge. So fallen angel, okay, Nephilim knowledge that human beings are not supposed to be a part of. Okay, so that's what I believe is being shown here. Again, this is from uh, Princess Diana, a.k.a. Wonder Woman's World on her island. Okay, and so we can see... Again, false knowledge, hidden, for sorry, forbidden knowledge that is being depicted here, okay, as what is uh, going on. We even saw this, as we spoke about in that uh, Reset uh, video about Nick Hall's book, Reset, and that Together Conference. Again, the same kind of symbolism being shown on his book, The Ouroboros, you know, symbolizing, again, forbidden knowledge, symbolizing Satan's eternal kingdom, all this kind of thing. I'm not sure for the Nick Hall uh, is a Luciferian or whether he knows what he's doing. You know, I don't claim to know this man's heart or mind. Maybe possibly he's still a good guy, maybe not even uh, knowing what he is doing, but this symbol is definitely, you know, not a good symbol. All right. So I, can, I believe we can already see what is taking place here. Uh, then we get to a scene in the trailer, which, which is depicting Wonder Woman's mother. She, her name is Queen Hippolyte, which is basically Wonder Woman's mother. We can see even the same kind of you know, uh, outfit that she wears on the head, the crown on the head, the V looking like the fifth age, okay, and later on in the trailer she says that I have no father, I was brought to life by Zeus, okay, again, totally de depicting the Greek gods and all this kind of stuff that is going on. When we go to Wikipedia, it pretty much confirms that, that uh, Wonder Woman is a warrior princess of the Amazons, okay, and she is... Uh, Wonder Woman's origin, sorry, origin story relates that she was sculpted from a clay figure by her mother, Queen Hippolyta, okay, as we see over here, okay, this is her mother, she sculpted her in the sand, I think as a mockery of God, Yahweh sculpting man in his man and woman in his own image out of the dirt, out of the sand, and received life and superhuman powers as blessings from members of the Olympian deities. Okay, so she has been depicted as a daughter of Zeus, and that's exactly what they're showing here. Okay, she was, uh, had no father. She, well, basically father was, or Zeus was the one who gave her her powers at the behest, the wish of Queen Hippolyte. 
okay, as she sculpted this, this girl from the sand and Zeus gave her her powers. So this is what is being shown here, the Greek gods. And just remember that we will talk about uh, this whole kingdom of Greece and Greek gods later, which I believe is such a confirmation, yet again, of biblical prophecy and what is about to unfold in this world. But I really want to focus right now on the Amazons, okay, as Princess Diana is known to be trained at least by an Am by Amazon warriors or was even an Amazon herself, okay? And these people in their uh, societies, in these Amazonian women's societies, they were a race of mighty warrior women. Their society was governed strictly and exclusively by women, providing a fascinating contrast to the male-dominated society of the ancient times. Men were not allowed to become members in their society unless it was for the specific purpose for of mating or for slavery. Perhaps this is why Homer describes them in the Iliad as women go to war like men. Okay, so, and they are even called killers of men. So these people, or this uh, warrior race, I believe, uh, Tom Horn and Ellie Marzulli believe that the Amazons were none other than a Nephilim fallen angel tribe, okay, of women. They indeed lived like soldiers, and their life purpose was to make wars against men. From childhood, the girls were taught the nuances of warfare, the bow and arrow, the libris, a kind of double-edged axe, and a shield in the shape of a crescent were their weapons. The Amazons showed unsurpassed skill and excellence as horse tamers and riders. Peculiar, but perhaps justified from the Amazons' perspective, was the removal of a girl's right breast. While still a girl, the right breast would be cauterized using a searing hot bronze tool. It was thought to be a necessary evil to mutilate and remove all possible hindrances to using a spear uh, or drawing an arrow. You know, this is something even I believe that Angelina Jolie did some time ago where she cut off, I'm not sure if it was both her breasts or one of them, and I'm not sure if whether she is doing this as part of a ritual because we definitely know that she's a Luciferian, but possibly maybe she's even something else. Maybe she has a Nephilim fallen angel blood DNA in her. I'm not sure. Maybe she is one of these, you know, Amazons are related to one of these things, and who knows if what, you know, what she did was actually depicting or showing the human race exactly what she really is okay so uh, as we go on further in this uh, we can see that um, Amazon women were not allowed to get married because they thought it would be a kind of slavery to a man uh, they were uh, supposed to be in tune with warfare than with feminism however to carry on their race they would very often mate with men from nearby societies or with handsome prisoners of war once their purpose was fulfilled the prisoners would be allowed uh, to be uh, would be used as slaves or even just killed okay then it talks about here how uh, basically men were discarded if a boy was born they would be killed or sent away uh, sounds even similar to uh, to Pharaoh and the Egyptians when they told the people of Israel to kill the boys but only to keep the women. Okay, same kind of thing. Obviously, they didn't want to deliver coming, but uh, they are also were doing something similar to what these Amazons were doing. Um, and it goes on to say about even their religious practices. The moon, since time immemorial, has been the symbol of everything that is feminine and beautiful. The Amazons were not just beautiful women who led an untamed life. They also used to worship the moon. Their name may have resulted from contact with the ancient uh, Circassians, who were known to worship the moon too. In fact, the word Amazon in the ancient Circassian language meant moon mother or mother of the forest. So, you know, if we go to what Semiramis is, okay, the queen of heaven, uh, someone who is condemned by the word of God, we can see that Semiramis is none other than the wife of Nimrod. She is the moon goddess. Okay, to the Romans and the Greeks, she is known as Artemis and Diana, the goddess of hunting and childbirth. The same thing that uh, God forbid to the children of Israel to worship the, uh, the mother of God or the queen of heaven from the book of Judges, also from the book of Jeremiah, queen of heaven, talking about uh, the Lord strictly telling Israel not to worship this. Diana right here, known as goddess of hunting and childbirth. So this is really what is going on here. Semiramis was worshipped in Ephesus as the pagan fertility goddess Diana, who represented the generative powers of nature. She was referred to as a fertility goddess because she mothered all the numerous pagan gods representing the god incarnate Tammuz. Diana was pictured with numerous uh, breasts so that she could nurse all the pagan gods, and she wore a tower-shaped crown symbolizing the Babylonian Tower of Babel. Okay, so if we go to Acts 19, we can see exactly what uh, they were referencing here. There was a riot in Ephesus apparently over this whole thing when Paul and and, uh, and his partner came over here. I believe Paul and Silas were the ones that were in this riot and uh, they came and there was a big commotion that was caused because uh, there's a, a people here that were making silver shrines of Diana 
and this person called the men together and said that they're that basically their uh, uh, profession is in jeopardy because Paul persuades many to turn away, uh, say that these are not gods that they are making with their hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed by whom all Asia uh, and the world worships. So they, they're showing here that all of Asia and a lot of the world is worshiping this Diana, which is none other than Semiramis. And then they shout, start uh, shouting, great is Diana of the Ephesians. The whole city is filled with confusion. And then uh, people that were crying one thing and another, just utter confusion, but the assembly was confused and most of them didn't even know why they had come together. So they're all shouting in confusion, great is Diana of the Ephesians, they're all rioting, doing horrible things. They don't even know what is taking place. They did this for two hours shouting, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Okay, so then they kept on going about that they're the city of the, or sorry, the city of the Ephesians is a temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus. So there you go. Even the Bible shows this origin of Diana, how Zeus uh, apparently gave her uh, the powers, uh, a mockery of God sculpting a, a man and a woman from, a, from the sand and giving it powers, which of, of course only God can do, not Satan, but that's what they want to show. Okay, and who else shouts great is their God but uh, the Muslims? God is great. Allahu Akbar talks about God is greatest. I believe this is the same kind of reference to saying great is Diana of the Ephesians. Of course, we as Christians can even, if we sing a song called How Great is Our God, but that is, of course, nothing wrong with that. But even the Muslim religion shouts, our God is greater. And what's even more interesting is that the symbol of Islam is none other than the crescent moon and the star. The crescent moon representing Diana, the mother goddess, and the star, of course, representing Lucifer, Nimrod, Okay, this is what is going on here. Same thing in Acts where they're worshiping the moon, they're worshiping Diana, her image that fell from Zeus. Okay, this is exactly what is going on here, which I believe uh, Wonder Woman is depicting. Okay, I believe this is what is rising up here. I mean, we can see even with all this Islamic terrorism or false flags, they love to use Islamic terrorism. I believe it's code for, you know, this, uh, this uh, age that is coming very, very soon. And of course, even in the, everyone, all of us know Amazon, even in their logo, we see this basically dragon or serpent's tail right in their logo. Many believe this is yet again another fallen angel slash Nephilim symbol right in the Amazon logo. Okay, so as we keep going now in uh, some of the screenshots, I was really quite floored to see as, uh, you know, Diana enters one of, uh, looks like a secret society gathering. A man comes walking towards her with tons of Ishtar, Star of Ishtar symbolism, pretty much all over his uniform. He got three of them right there. I believe that is none other than a depiction of the Star of Ishtar. We see it again in a later scene in the trailer. Again, people walking around. You can see eight seats here, I believe. You can see the eight-pointed star. I believe this is probably yet again another secret society meeting. Of course, we're not, I haven't seen the movie yet. None of us have until it comes out, but I was quite floored to see this kind of symbolism. And of course, the star of Ishtar is what I believe is being telegraphed here. Okay, it is the eight-pointed star, the star of Inanna, of Ishtar, Diana, Semiramis, Artemis, Aphrodite, Venus, whatever you want to call it. And this to me is none other than certain symbolism that the pit is about to be opened. I believe that is what they're showing that to CERN, of course, we know is right there by the gates of Apollo. Apoliacom, as Tom Horn has said, that there is right around where they call the gates of hell. Okay, where the Temple of Apollo once stood. So this is what I believe they're showing, that they are uh, really working hard on opening the pit. Okay, that is what I believe is taking place here and what they're showing with this, with this eight-pointed star symbolism that seems to be, you know, all over the place. In this movie, or at least in the trailer, I found another interesting, you know, clip or shot from the trailer with this woman seemingly her face kind of coming apart. Is this seemingly a reference to the iron and clay not cleaving to each other as shown in Daniel 2? I believe the, the reference to the iron and the clay is, is uh, talking about the seed of the fallen angels mingling again with the seed of men, the iron and the clay. So I'm not sure what uh, is actually going on here, but possibly it could be a reference to the iron and the clay not mixing. Then even as we get even into the logo of this movie, okay, we see this W. Of course, many of us will just think, you know, blindly that it stands for Wonder Woman. And that, of course, is, you know, on the surface, that's what it is. But what I see is something even that Russian Vids has pointed out many times 
when we look at even the symbol for the WWE, okay, the wrestling, we see again the two, the triple W, which is actually, if you turn it on its side, is basically 33. Okay, we see the same thing here in the Wonder Woman sim symbolism, the third, the three, and the three, the W. If you turn it onto its side, it will be a 33. Also, I believe it's showing the phoenix that is rising. Okay, the one world system, the harlot, beast, one world system, whatever you want to call it, the new world order that is coming. We can see the W and the W, which again, to me, is none other than the 33 being shown as the highest degree of Freemasonry. I believe the Wonder Woman symbol is definitely showing that as we have been shown this many times. This 33 symbolism is being shown on a regular basis. And, you know, as we keep going in this movie, one of the actions that uh, Wonder Woman does a lot is crossing her arms. She does this, you know, because as the story goes, she has these indestructible bracelets that she's able to deflect other weaponry. She's able to, you know, not only defend herself, but to help others as well. She did that in the Batman versus Superman movie where she uh, was able to save Batman from being killed by one of the, uh, basically the bad characters. And so she does this a lot. We see this kind of action being done by Wonder Woman a lot, even in the older uh, cartoons and older shows with Linda Carter, again, crossing her arms. She's got these invincible bracelets that she uses to defend herself and deflect other weapons and all that kind of thing. We've seen this many times, this X symbolism, which again, Beyonce showed the same X symbolism when she did her Super Bowl performance. Again, I think a reference to the X, okay, that were being shown. We've seen this also in, of course, the Purge election year movie. So in this Purge election year movie, again, we see the X in case, of course, it's the double X symbolism, the IXXI. We are being shown this many times, the X with Beyonce. We've got the X symbolism with uh, with uh, Wonder Woman being shown a lot in this cartoon, you know, from, from way back when. So what is being shown here? I believe we covered this in previous videos, you know, again, with the Purge election we spoke of before. And don't be fooled by this. I really believe the Statue of Liberty is none other yet again of a representation of Isis, Semiramis, Wonder Woman, Diana, whatever you want to call it. And this whole IXXI symbolism is, is being shown so many times in all these movies is none other than a Jesuit symbol. Okay, they are showing who are who is in control behind all these things. And you know, a blog that I showed recently called the Open Scroll Blog talking about the 33, the XX. We know that the XX is is basically CC backward when we go backward in the alphabet. Okay, it is a reference uh, to exalt Horus. Okay, it is uh, connecting uh, the, the the pyramid and uh, the Luciferian symbols. It is the symbol of uh, the female gender. And uh, when we see the XX, it may be considered a form of sex magic. Okay, so we can see the XX is being shown many times. Okay, so we see this yet again in the purge election year. And of course, with good old Wonder Woman, she's doing the same thing. Okay, so when she defends herself and when she defends other people, she makes the sign of the cross or the X, which is a reference yet again to the Illuminati, to the Jesuits, to the people who are truly in control of what is going on. You know, and as we go uh, more into the trailer, we see her fighting. She's using, using her lasso of truth, as it is called. And I believe this is, to me, a mockery or a counterfeit of the armor of God. Okay, we see Wonder Woman being depicted, you know, with a lasso of truth, with a sword, you know, with a shield, all these kinds of things. And, you know, this is, to me, yet again, a reference to what we see in Ephesians 6, the armor of God. You know, they love to show her as a warrior. She's got the sword. She's got the lasso, and they call the lasso of truth, the shield. Uh, the boots, the 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 p the headpiece, and of course, if we go to Ephesians six, this is to me a, a none other than a mockery or a counterfeit of the armor of God that the Lord has given us. Therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, okay, she wants to be shown as the lasso of truth, which is right around her waist, okay. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you can be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So I believe Wonder Woman being depicted as a warrior is showing the counterfeit or the fake armor of God. The, you know, this is not a helmet of salvation. This is not a shield of faith. This is not the sword of the spirit. This is not the belt buckle of truth. This is not the breastplate of righteousness, and this, these are not the shoes of peace, okay? It is yet again a counterfeit of what the true armor of God is. So remember, this is the true armor of God as seen in Ephesians 6.
but this is the counterfeit armor of God, the fake powers, the false lying wonders that the devil does, you know, his fallen angels and the devil himself. They will never have the power of God. They will never be able to defend us. They can only cause destruction and chaos. Even though they make it seem really appealing, really, really beautiful, all that kind of thing. I believe this is, you know, Wonder Woman to me is yet again a reference to the Scarlet Woman on the Beast. The mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth, the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. I believe she is the one who, uh, she's the great harlot who sits on many waters. Okay, and I believe when the Bible talks about the many waters, of course it even interprets itself down here where the angel shows John that the waters are the people of the earth. And she is the woman that reigns over them. So I believe this Wonder Woman is basically code for the fact that she is the harlot or symbolizing the harlot religion that is over all of the world. You can see the false religion symbol right all over her with even the Star of Ishtar that is even in her headband, I believe. You can see it right here. The Star of Ishtar yet again, as we spoke about it already, which is the Star of Samarimus, the Star of Isis, the Star of Ishtar, the Star of Diana whatever you want to call it this is what is being shown here and this is none other than a reference i believe to the harlot religion you know just as nimrod if he is going to be resurrected which we surely know from revelation 9 11 apollo coming out of the pit semiramis nimrod or diana sorry is also i believe being resurrected which is symbolized or Diana symbolizes, I believe, all of the pagan, you know, religions that people are under. Of course, we know that sadly, the majority of the world, they all follow pagan religion. Um, you know, I'm not sure the percentage of evangelical Christians in the entire world, but the vast majority of the world are following Semiramis, are following pagan religion. And so Diana or, you know, Wonder Woman, I believe, represents all of the pagan religions in one, the mystery, Babylon, harlots, okay, who the Lord God, Yahweh, has warned us against not to worship because the majority of the world are under her spell, okay? So I believe we are being shown on a regular basis that this is what is coming soon, that the immortals are coming, that the giants, that the fallen angels along with Lucifer are coming very soon. They want to have their new world order. I believe their minions in this world, all the corrupt world leaders, this is what they are working towards. They want their gods to come, all right? All the elites are working for this. This is what they're frantically about as they worship these fallen angels. They worship all of these false deities. In fact, the book of Isaiah speaks of this. Uh, we, we mentioned this before, Isaiah 13 from the Septuagint, okay, the Greek translation of the original Hebrew. Isaiah 13, 3 says, I give command and I bring them. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath, rejoicing at the same time and insulting. So I believe this is what we are being shown. They make it look so glorious. They make it look so you know, so appealing, you know, they make it look like, oh, you know, we simple human beings, how awesome it would be to have powers, you know, but really this is none other than fallen angel Nephilim trickery. They want you to desire these kinds of things. They want you to be like them. And they are putting out so many of these movies. Of course, we know there's been such an influx of superhero movies and TV shows that depict human beings with special power, showing them evolving or showing them turning into something else. This is yet again, I reference, I believe, to the to the children of Lucifer, the fallen angels, the Nephilim, and they are returning just as it has been prophesied in Isaiah 13, that giants, the Nephilim, the fallen angels, are coming very soon to fulfill the wrath of Yahweh on this world. And even Tom Horn speaks of these things in his book that he wrote with Chris Putnam. I have this book myself, but I haven't read it yet, but I'm really looking forward to reading it called On the Path of the Immortals. I believe he is talking about the return of the fallen angels, the return of the Nephilim that I believe are so ready to come on the scene. I believe they cannot come on the scene until the, re the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is taken away once the rapture of the church takes place as depicted in and taught in Second Thessalonians 2. I believe that once the restrainer is taken away, then the Nephilim, the fallen angels, then they can come onto the scene and do their thing. Then they can have their new world order. Then they can have, you know, uh, their final golden age kingdom that the elites have been have been so uh, looking forward to for so long. But until that time, definitely there's going to be persecutions. There's definitely, you know, uh, persecution on the rise in the church in general. And until that time, until we are taken, I believe we're going to see the rising of this new world order because they want to get people ready 
for this, you know, for the return of the fallen angels. I believe that the pit is being opened very soon. As we see some other screenshots, you know, we see one new woman, you know, there's a part where she's climbing up a ladder. To me, it just hit me as is she, is this showing the emerging from the pit? You know, Nimrod, Apollo, Semiramis, you know, the, the, the new world order, the phoenix rising out of the ashes. Then there's another scene showing her boots on the ground as, as if depicting that she is fully emerged, that the phoenix has fully emerged and the new world order is coming very, very soon. I believe this is what is being shown on a regular basis through these movies. And, you know, again, it's none other than what we spoke about before, Daniel 8, showing the vision of the ram and the goat. You know, and Daniel saw a male goat who grew very great. And when he became strong, um, his horns were broken. And out of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. And it grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. He even exalted himself as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away. Okay, and later on, it goes on to say, Gabriel interprets the vision for Daniel, saying that the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. And I believe, like I mentioned before in a previous video, that the kingdom of Greece is to me none other than the fallen angel kingdom of Greece. I believe that, you know, the vision speaks of Alexander the Great and the four kings that came after him that were men. But this final horn that is able to grow up, you know, towards heaven, he's able to cast down some of the hosts of heaven. He grew very big and he grew up into the host of heaven. He's, I think, depicting a giant, the return of Nimrod. I believe this is what is being shown that, you know, the fact that Diana also is an Olympian, Wonder Woman is an Olympian. Okay, I believe, you know, the Olympians are who the Greeks worshipped. And this kingdom of Greece that is being shown in the book of Daniel chapter 8 to me is none other than the Olympians, the pagan fallen angel deities that the Greeks worship, the kingdom of Greece or Olympus. Okay, so I believe this is what is happening or this is what is being depicted, that the final, uh, the final ruler, Nimrod himself, is coming. He will be the one that will have fierce features who will understand sinister schemes. He will be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. Okay, so by his cunning, he shall call, cause deceit to prosper under his rule. He shall exalt himself in his heart and he shall destroy many. Okay, so I believe this is what is being shown that the kingdom of darkness is rising, just as even Yeshua HaMashiach says in Matthew 24, that nation will rise against nation, of course, which are, you know, kingdoms of men, but kingdom against kingdom. I believe the kingdom of the devil is rising up against the kingdom of uh, God. This is what is happening. I believe this is what we're being shown on a regular basis, that the kingdom of light, Yahweh, and the kingdom of darkness, Satan, Lucifer, is, is rising up, that this final battle is coming, this final climax, already being shown that uh, she is emerging very soon from the pit. Her boots are going to be on the ground very soon. The full force of the New World Order is coming very soon. She is, a, she is emerging. The phoenix is coming out of the ashes, possibly from a false flag. This will happen. And then later on, in the trailer, we see the secretary of one of the main characters saying that I go where he tells me to go. I do what he tells me to do as she's introducing herself to, uh, to Wonder Woman, to Diana. And of course, Wonder Woman says to her, where I come from, that's called slavery. So are we being shown that the new world order is coming very soon, that the plans of the devil are to enslave all of humanity? He makes it look so appealing. He makes it look like it would be so awesome to have powers and abilities and all these things that we as humans just can't do. But it is all forbidden knowledge. We are not uh, to do those things because one, we will only be able to have or to ascend to what we were meant to be once our bodies are changed through Christ. We can only have a new birth. We can only have spiritual rebirth. We can only have, you know, a true contentment when we have Christ. I believe we are being shown through these movies that, uh, you know, to, to have all these powers is so appealing, but this is none other than the fallen angel lying wonders that Satan wants to make so appealing. And he wants to enslave all of humanity. And this is exactly what is coming very soon. So please be in Christ. He is the only one. Yeshua HaMashiach is the only one who can save you from the coming disasters. I'm not saying that you're, that we're not going to have trials and tribulations until, you know, before, you know, the final new world order comes. I believe that, you know, we are going to go through many trials and tribulations. I believe this new world order is definitely rising up. We are being shown this. And, you know, 
I do not say not to watch these movies, but what I do say is watch these movies with care, with caution. Be aware of the programming that is taking place. You know, yes, they're very entertaining. They're very fun to watch. I love these kinds of movies myself. But let us not just sit down and be entertained. Let us see the hidden messages and not be programmed, you know, as we sit down to watch these movies because the fifth age is definitely coming. You can see the V right on even, you know, Princess Diana, a.k.a. Wonder Woman, whatever you want to call her, Semiramis, uh, Ishtar, Isis, Diana. This is what is being depicted, that the final, you know, New World Order is coming, the B system is coming, and we need to be uh, preaching the gospel like never before, showing people that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ is the name above all of these names, above all of these superheroes that we're being shown, all of these fallen angel deities and entities. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the name above all names. And only at his feet and at his name will every knee bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the Lord uh, uh, God Almighty. And he is the one to be worshipped. He is the name that is above all names. God bless you. Welcome to the origins of your favorite superheroes and villains. Today we're going to be examining the origin of Wonder Woman. Now, unlike most DC superheroes, Wonder Woman has not gotten a massive alteration to her original origin. So we're going to be looking at the origin that was in the Closet of Mystery number no. 7 comic book and has been retold in Secret Origins number no. 6. Diana is an Amazon, that we all know, but there's more to her story that not even she is fully aware of in the beginning. You see, her mother, the queen, was barren and unable to have children. So she took the clay from the beaches of the Amazonian island and she made Diana out of that clay. And she told her daughter about that. What she didn't tell her is that there is more to the story. You see, Zeus, the king of gods, arrived that night on the beach and he came together with the queen of the Amazons in a forbidden love. She can't tell Diana about this because Hera, Zeus's wife, would have Diana killed. And because of this, Diana has always felt like she didn't belong with the Amazons. Her mother would do anything to protect her daughter, but Diana, she wants more. She doesn't want to stay on this island. While she may be the princess of the Amazons, she just felt like being clay, she didn't belong with the Amazons. She wanted to go to the mainland. She wanted to go to man's world. But when she told this to her friends, they turned their backs on her. They told her that if it was so easy for her to leave the island and her sisters, then she just didn't belong with them. She was nothing more than clay. Diana was hurt, and she told her mother of her intentions, but her mother just wrote it off as an adventurous girl wanting to explore. She promised that she would take her daughter to the mainland as a weekend trip. Diana tossed and turned in her bed that night. She just wanted to explore the world. She just wanted to go somewhere where she didn't have to hide what she is. She's tired of being ashamed that she is nothing more than clay. When suddenly, the goddess Athena arrives to tell the young princess, You have nothing to be ashamed of. You wanting to leave does not turn your back on anyone. You are taking up a worthy struggle to face who you are. One that this god approves of. While Diana must take this journey alone, she at least has this god's support. Meanwhile, Captain Trevor was on a test flight over the Bermuda Triangle when strange gusts of wind came through and they threw his plane into a spiral. Looking for a place to crash land, he saw an island that he's never seen before, and he decided that he had no option but to crash land on this unknown island. Stumbling away from his crash landing, he falls in front of a very curious young princess who rushed out to see what all this noise is about. Diana walks over and she tells him that he has landed on an island where there are no men and only women. And he just replies with, Sounds like paradise. She lifts him up and surprised he turns to her. Say, you're pretty strong for a girl. No, I'm just pretty strong, Diana corrects him. And Trevor realizes his mistake, so he apologizes. I didn't mean to offend you. But that doesn't mean you didn't, Diana tells him. She walks back to the city and once asked what all of this is, she tells them, this is my ticket off of the island. From this point on, Diana did go to the mainland as she worked through Captain Trevor, and eventually, Captain Trevor worked with the entire Justice League through Diana.